then why nearly a century later is it still an issue? <laughs> yeah. It is still an issue because uh, this, is, this is not the only case, but it's the most extreme case where a government, the contemporary Turkish government and the governments that have come before it in the last decades, uh, has launched an active campaign of denial, of trying to uh, convince people that the genocide never occurred, that what happened was perhaps a civil war between two communities or in, in, in some other interpretations that are even uh, more off the mark that you know, Armenians as a group, as an entire group, launched uh, a military revolt against the Ottoman Empire in wartime. So we have a really a very, uh, certainly a well-funded campaign, and also a very sophisticated campaign that involves not just the public realm, but unfortunately also the scholarly realm, a very sophisticated campaign to convince people that the genocide never happened. But I think the historical evidence is so overwhelming that we're really, we're really in a fight about truth and lies. I mean, it's, you know, it's that basic. It's that basic. And I, per, I can give you personal uh, experiences. I was sitting in the archives of the German Foreign Ministry just uh, this past December looking through the consular reports that German consuls were sending back to Berlin. This is German officials about their own ally, uh, the Young Turk government in World War I, and these consular officials come to see pretty quickly, perhaps not immediately, but come to see pretty quickly the extent of the campaign that the Young Turks had launched against the Armenians. Some of the German officials were appalled by what they saw and wrote back to Berlin re requesting, pleading with the government to intervene with its own its Ottoman ally on behalf of Armenians, to no avail. Uh, other Germans, unfortunately, and especially military officers, thought that you know this was okay what the Young Turks were doing to the Armenians. We tend to most successfully combat evil when we can personify it. I mean, we, we, Hitler represented all Nazis. Stalin. Uh, we're, we seem to be missing uh, a key villain in this story. Who would it be, and, and why? Why haven't? Uh, why hasn't this particular circumstance had that kind of um, capturing the American uh, imagination? It doesn't have a villainous figure, partly because it's longer ago in the past, 90 years now. Uh, partly because there was no single individual; there was a triumvirate at the top of the Young Turk government, whose names would be completely unknown to most Americans, unlike Stalin, Hitler, he, even Pol Pot, and the names of Enver Pasha and Talat Pasha, I mean, they, they, these would have no register with Americans. But more than that, I think what's important to understand about the Armenian genocide uh, and why we talk about it as the first systematic genocide in the 20th century is that while the government launched the genocide. It was only able to carry it out because of the active cooperation of large segments of the population. Now that does not mean that every single Turk was involved in the genocide just like every single German was not involved in the Holocaust. But it does mean that the character of these genocides, their the extent of their murderous char uh, character has to do with, with the ability of those governments to get many, many people, large segments of the population, to cooperate. Now, sometimes cooperation is, is in the actual murdering of people or herding people through the desert. But cooperation is also you know, the Armenians get shipped out and uh, you know, Turks take their land, take their apartments. If, the, if it's in the cities, uh, take other wealth that they have. And that is the really kind of difficult, awful character of these genocides. That they're not just, just carried out by a few people at the top. If it was carried out, if that was all it was, we could deal with it pretty easily, actually. But the fact that these become social projects, as we say in, in, in among historians, that in 
they become much bigger, which is why that the societies after the genocides are always stalked by the past. And even when the Turkish government tries to deny it, even it can't completely remove the burden of the past that the society has to deal with.